This is Matilda Lutz, who is playing Red Sonia in the remake, saying, What I can tell you about Red Sonia is that the first ones in the comics were made with a very male-gazed orientation. This yep. is a completely different story. It's very women-empowered, which I loved about the script. And I went to the Hollywood Reporter's interview with the director, MJ Bassett, who... I think this is relevant to information. MJ Bassett is transgender, okay, identifies as a woman. And this says uh, this whole project relies on an outspoken transgender director who gleefully defies stereotype. And this is the savior who's going to save this project from production hell after it has been plagued with scandals, with Me Too allegations. And This is all on top of the fact that the 1985 Red Sonja is widely considered one of the worst movies that Arnold, Arnold ever made. Mm -hmm. ever like to this to this day i kid you not he said in an interview years ago he says uh, if my kids were acting out i would threaten them with having to watch red sonia 10 times if they don't change their behavior and they always did and at the premiere for the film maria shriver says if this movie does not sink your career nothing will that was a dakota johnson moment he also he also (laughs) had an affair on set with bridget nielsen see this is definitely cursed okay also they said um the deciding factor resides in the lanky six foot frame of mj bassett a 50 something trans woman whose relationship with red sonia dates back to childhood and in her own telling borders on an obsession and with that in mind you should learn that MJ Bassett has previously previously said about the new take on Red Sonia that she will no longer be depicted as a victim of sexual assault which was a major plot point in the original film yeah so that's going to be rewritten MJ Bassett said uh I didn't warm to the previous script, which was much more sexual politics. Now, this sounds based at first. Obviously, in my personal life, I'm interested in that. But as a storyteller, I don't think it's interesting. She eliminated a key plot point from the original film, Sonia's rape by marauding enemies. Quote, I have no interest in fictional women who use rape as an engine of motivation. It's not a strong motivation. She's just a human being in the world of femininity whatever the hell that means and this trans director is trying to tell us what femininity means and how a female character would react to being raped and whether that constitutes a valid motivation for revenge and all the sad thing is all of that is deep but the the shallow factor of this is look it's not 2018 anymore and there's more than enough evidence that statements like this about subverting the male gaze is not going to win you any fans when you're trying to promote a film like this it's just not this film has been through four three or four different red sonias in its time frame also somebody said like arnold was the star when was he in the chainmail bikini no he played calador who is no. basically just he was conan but they didn't have the rights to conan at the time so he's calador um because he played conan in the 1982 and 1984 films i think those were the years on those um at one point rose mcgowan was tied to this amber heard was tied to this another at another point they were even going to race swap her with hannah john came in who was in the show killjoys which i actually really really liked i was just like oh boy another yeah. another race swap uh and of course brian singer was attached to this at one point before he was me too right he got me too so they scrapped him um and then later on they mentioned that they hired the transparent creator joey soloway who had just come out as non-binary and was dealing with the repercussions of a Me Too scandal involving transparent star Jeffrey Tambor. The actor was accused of sexually harassing two trans women on set, allegations that he denies, and that partnership quickly soured as well. Like, this project has been followed by demons who don't want it to get made. I feel like you should just listen to the fates and scrap it all together. Don't let anyone do this. It's, uh, it is interesting that, uh, a st- I mean, there is very little in the way of a story that could be more woman-empowered than a female overcoming a sexual assault to go on to do this, So right? this is her motivation for, like, a retribution, yeah. basically? She was, uh, in, in the original, they said that she was assaulted by marauders. And so the, the thing is, if the director doesn't want to go there, that's one thing, but then if you feel such an attachment to the character, wouldn't you want to do as much as you could to keep it closer to what the original portrayed? Right, well, it's just, I'm gonna rewrite the entire catalyst Mm. for the plot and the character arc. And 
instead of making a new character with that with that story, I'm just gonna put I'm gonna slap this IP on it. I don't know what the over under is on whether we actually see her in the chainmail bikini, but my guess is very very low chances that that happens. Well, you can see in that promotional image right there, she's wearing a full armor suit, right? Yep. yep. I mean, at least it appears that way. Yep. Um, and, you know, she's a beautiful actress. She is. You know, no hate to her and, specifically. Uh, and, and she's probably been and, told to say these things. And a redhead. So that, that was the other thing. They're like, can we at least get somebody with red hair? She's actually not a redhead. But she, she dyed her hair for the role, I'm sure. Like, yeah, but that's than, cheating. That's cheating. Uh, like, But the thing is, like, with Hannah John Kamen, it would have been like with Ariel from The, from the Little Mermaid. It would have looked like, awkward. Orange dreadlocks. Yeah. yeah. Not everything needs to be remade. No. You know, just because it failed and is known as a bad movie, you need to remake it. Yeah. Why? <laughs> I don't it's, know. Uh, it's it's just really laziness. Really it. It's laziness through and through. Thanks for watching. Listen to full episodes of Pop Culture Crisis on Spotify. Keep up with us on social media and make sure you subscribe and ring that bell so you never miss the show. Bye, guys.